I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. I don't. Can we just not? Can we just like pretend this never happened? Oh no! Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm enjoying it, but I've only just kind of started enjoying it. Hello everyone! Today we are going to be celebrating spooky season! It's spooky season everyone! I am so excited, I'm so in the mood to read some horror. Look at, look at, it's freaking bats. I love Halloween. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be yeah. reading my spookiest books, my spookiest horror books yeah. on my TBR. I haven't actually really got a set TBR for this vlog. I know that I just want to read horror. So I did a video a couple weeks ago about all the horror on my TBR and I'm just going to be kind of picking books from that, like what I'm in the mood for. I know. Who said I could be a mood reader? Who knew? Who knew she could be a mood reader? So yeah, I know what the first book I'm going to be reading is, but then the rest of the week we'll just pick spooky horror books. So the one we're going to be starting with in this vlog is, without a doubt, my most anticipated book for the second half of this year. And it is White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. This arc was very kindly sent to me by the publisher. This is a haunted house horror thriller. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Haunted House. Oh my god, I'm so excited for like ghostiness, spooky stuff going on, unexplained spooky stuff going on. She is the moment. She is the moment. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Now come on now. I really don't know what to expect from this. All I know is our main character. I think her family, her, like I think her mum and her mum's boyfriend are just moving in together. So it's kind of a blended family and they're moving to this new house together and spooky shit starts occurring. That's all I know. It's pitched as Haunting of Hill House meets Get Out and I am just so excited. So we're going to start with this and then we'll read other spooky stuff this week as well. So let's go. I'm so excited. Okay, here is the situation. I am about halfway through White Smoke. So basically in this we are following Marigold, whose family has moved into this new area. It's a blended family. So it's her mum and her brother, and then her mum's new boyfriend and his daughter. And the daughter, <laughs> uh, they do not get on. They do not get on. The daughter's like 10, Marigold's like 17 or something. And I do not trust this kid. Scary kids, scary kids. I don't like him. I don't like them. I don't like them. She's scary. <laughs> and yeah, like spooky shit is going on in the house. I'm um, questioning, is it haunted? Is it something else? But I'm not scared yet. That's my problem. I wanted to be spooked. Maybe this isn't horror. Maybe it, Maybe I should see it more as like, it does say on the back, a psychological thriller, but everyone is categorizing it as horror, but it does feel more like a thriller. I wanted to be scared <laughs> and I'm not scared like spooky shit is going on there's a few points where i feel a bit apprehensive but i'm not scared <laughs> marigold's an interesting main character she suffers a lot with anxiety and constantly being hinted at and slowly being revealed things in her past that meant they had to remove and one seems to be a drug addiction that she kind of developed to deal with her anxiety and so there's a lot in this book about marigold wanting weed basically to help with her anxiety and kind of the discussion around weed i guess this book is having is like is it okay to to take to stop you taking those um harder drugs or is it at, you know, in Marigold's case, she started with weed and then went on to other harder drugs um, and is now trying to just cope with just weed. So there's a lot of discussions around weed in this book and about how that affects someone and like addiction and stuff like that. And I think that's great. I think that's an element of it that I, I really admire because I've never read a YA book where the main character is dealing with any kind of addiction, let alone like a weed addiction. And I think it's important that these themes, which I think some like hoity-toity publishers, like, mm, um, they'd be like, oh, it's too adult. It's too adult for YA. Bitch, YA has had sex, death, everything since the beginning of time. <laughs> like since YA began, that has been present in YA. But I think issues that are not only coded as mature, but coded as poor, or black, or you know, any of those things are deemed unacceptable, right? But these are issues that are affecting young adults, <laughs> so it should be in young adult. So I really admire that element of it, that that is um, being featured in this book. But I just don't love it yet. And this was like kind of my number one anticipated release for the second part of this year, and it's not 
serving up everything I wanted to. He's mugged you off, darling. <laughs> Yes, Mac Chihuahua. I don't think I like the audiobook, and I've listened to quite a lot of it via the audiobook just so I can actually read. I think Marigold is not the kind of character whose head you want to be in because she's very anxious. Oh, another thing I completely forgot. She has anxiety around bed bugs, right? Like an obsession with bed bugs. They had this infestation in their house and um, she has this anxiety around bed bugs and like believing that they're on her and wanting to scrub it off. And she has all these kind of coping mechanisms like burning clothes and shit. And as someone who, not around bed bugs, but experienced health anxiety, general health anxiety a couple years ago and was very unwell with it. Just before I started my channel, I really always appreciate any health anxiety in books because that before I had health anxiety, I didn't even know it existed. Like I didn't even know that kind of like specific, quite common form of anxiety existed. That's why I didn't really know what was wrong with me. And I think if I had read this, perhaps I would have felt differently and maybe have recognized it sooner myself. So again, I really appreciate that. So I've been talking for a long time, so let me shut up. <laughs> but the point is, there's a lot of aspects in this that I appreciate, but I am not loving the experience of reading it. I'm not scared enough. I'm not thrilled enough <laughs> if it's a thriller. I'm gonna go finish it. I am tomorrow going to London how exciting for the book launch of the spirit engineer by aj west if you saw me reading that it's another spooky spooky season book um i'm gonna go to the book launch for that so i'm super excited for that so i don't think i'll finish this before then but i'll check in with you probably the day after once i have finished it I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it. I don't, can we just not? Can we just like pretend this never happened? I'm at breaking point. Fuck. I didn't, I didn't love it. I didn't love it and I'm very sad about it and I'm very annoyed. In terms of, not worst book by any means that I have read this year, but probably the most disappointing. Probably the most disappointing because it was one of my most anticipated releases and... I just didn't love it. I'm gonna give this a three star. In terms of my enjoyment, it's probably a 2.5. But I wanna recognize in that rating that I just seem to be having a bit of trouble with YA at the moment. And some of you bitches will be thinking, just stop reading YA. But no, because I love YA. YA is traditionally like the genre that so many of my favorite books come from. So I'm not gonna stop reading YA. <laughs> Just in the past maybe two months, I haven't had much success with it. So I want to recognise that maybe me and YA are going through a bit of a funk at the moment and some of it is me and not the book. I loved a lot of the conversations it had. I think that's a problem we're having with YA as well, is that I'm loving conversations that are being had in a lot of YA, but I'm not just enjoying the writing. The ending was... Uh, disappointing for me. I didn't feel like the ending pulled it off. Like the ending felt like a bit like an anti-climax. There's, okay, no, I can't say that because that's a spoiler, but how can I say that without spoiling it? Hmm. There's just something that books like this do that piss me off. And like, I feel cheated. That's what I'm gonna say. That's what I'm gonna say. It could be about anything. And it just annoys me and I'm like, come on, give me what I wanted. Give me what I wanted. You know, I'm still very excited to read all of Tiffany D. Jackson's other stuff because I was talking to some of my patrons about it. One of them had literally just read it. I think she gave it like one or two stars. And she was saying that, you know, a lot of people who love Tiffany D. Jackson's other stuff haven't enjoyed this. So I'm still going to read Grown. There it is. And hopefully Monday's not coming. So this hasn't put me off reading Tiffany D. Jackson's stuff. I don't even want to talk about it because I'm just so sad. I can't even look at the wall without thinking sad things. So yeah, I enjoyed the conversation they had around like consumption of weed, gentrification, you know, all this stuff. But also, oh, that's another thing. I feel like because it covered all those issues, there were so many plot elements and kind of 
in little mysteries that were laid and I didn't feel like they were all resolved at the end. It wasn't really given the time, that's it, it wasn't given the time that I felt like it should have been given to cover those issues as much as I wanted. So that's my opinion, <laughs> I'm really sad but I'm still gonna give it three stars because I admire a lot of what it did and some of it may just be me. So it's currently Friday, so the week is coming to a close and I've only read one book. I, I've been speaking to my patrons a bit about this, we're not gonna get into it too much because I don't want everywhere to be sad hours. I'm talking about it but um I haven't been the happiest the past week I feel like my life has kind of gone to shit a little bit no that's exaggeration but I've just been sad <laughs> I've just been sad and struggling to do stuff like you know when you're sad and like tasks that should take you like one hour take you three hours that's what's been happening with me you know I feel like in these kind of videos if I don't read three books I failed you <laughs> But we're just gonna read two books in this vlog. I hope that's okay. But what I'm gonna read next is um, The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. I'm so excited to read this. I'm pretty sure I've put this on like five star predictions, books I wanna read this year, like so many lists. This has been up there. I've been so excited to get to it. So all I need to do today is edit some of this vlog like up till here and read. I've got sprints with my patrons in about two hours so we're gonna we're gonna read this then. I'm gonna edit up till then but I also thought right now to try and like mitigate the sadness I've been feeling let's quickly unbox Fairy Lou. <laughs> That's what we've been waiting for! It's what we wanted all along! They do send me these and it always cheers me up to open them. So this is the September Fairy Loot box. Uprising is the theme this month. Oh, okay, we've got a card holder inspired by the Prison Healer. That's cute. I haven't read the Prison Healer. I've heard some good things about it though. Isn't she cute? She's cute. I don't know when I'd use a card holder though. I just put things in my pocket. In my pocket, in my purse, if I'm honest. Oh, what's this? Oh, an ember in the ashes enamel pin. We all know I did not love an ember in the ashes, but that is cute. Look at that pin, look at her. That's really cute. May death claim me first. That's a gorgeous pin, especially up close. What have we got here? What is this? Excuse me? A tapestry? Oh my God, hang on. What am I looking at? Oh my God, is that? I, before I even find out what that is, is that a daughter of smoke and bone? It is! Look, at, I'm starting to recognize characters, ladies and gentlemen. I see. I'm telling you, I have the mind of a master, master. I have the mind of a mastermind. What's that? I don't know. Never recognize characters. I'm always like, who is she? But I knew that was Karu. Look, isn't that so cute? I can't see if you can see it, but that is so cute. Oh, we got some. So I was just saying, I need more socks. Listen, things like socks in book boxes, I. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate them. I can't tell you how much I appreciate them. I was saying to Tom how I need more socks. Oh, and it's inspired by Six Crimson Cranes, which I haven't read, but it's gorgeous, and I do want to. Oh my god, cute. Okay, I'm literally gonna put them on right now. And apparently there's, there's, there's two books this month. I love it when they give two books. Oh my god, Jesus Christ. Check out the labels. Me. <laughs> So we've got Beasts of Prey by Ayana Gray. Oh, I don't know anything about this. Pan-African inspired fantasy. Fate binds two teenagers together as they strike a dangerous alliance to hunt down the ancient creature menacing their home. <gasps> How exciting! Okay, this is, this is what I needed. A little bit of book, you know, haulage makes me so happy. That's exciting. Wow, let me know if you've read this. This looks so good. Wow, okay, I love that cover. That's so cute. And then what is the book in the box? Oh! We have got Defy the Night by Bridget Kemmerer. Lovely purple sprayed edges, you love to see it. Oh, look at that. I love it when they do art on the inside of the dust jacket. I gotta be honest, I don't love that cover, but I feel like they're trying to make it look like Bridget Kemmerer's other stuff, A Curse So Dark and Lonely. I have always been intrigued by that series so i'm intrigued by this one i think this is like romance like a fantasy romance oh my god it's got it's got uh they know me i love it when books have this it makes me feel so bougie it's got a ribbon bookmark it's got a ribbon bookmark i love it when they do this i will leave fairy loot link down below as always make sure you go check them out i love when they give me two books how generous i am gonna go edit this video up till here and then when my patreon sprints start i will start the only good indians and i'm very excited I am 
from about 100 pages in Two Only Good Indians, and I'm not gonna lie, it took me, a, like, pretty much these whole 100 pages to get into the book and to, like, get used to how it's being told. I don't know how to describe it, but the writing style was just not what I expected, and it kind of, like, threw me for a loop, and I was like, hang on. <laughs> And actually what really helped for me was turning on the audiobook, so reading along with the audiobook, because it helped me, you know, really understand like what was happening and that the the way that like sentences were being phrased and stuff. So essentially 10 years ago, these group of friends shot a group of elk and killed some elk. They are now basically being stalked in some capacity and punished in a way for that and we're following one of them in particular and he feels a lot of guilt around that and it's like something that follows him and he feels like haunts him. I'm enjoying it! Again it's very different than what I expected, it's kind of this like claustrophobic horror like building and building in, 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 in suspense, it feels very claustrophobic to me. I feel like part of the problem might actually just be I actually, <laughs> after all of this, I'm not in the mood for horror. I mean I thought I was but I think maybe because I'm a bit down at the moment, I think I'm more in the headspace in terms of spooky or, or autumnal books. I'm more in the mood for like a cosy mystery which thankfully is what I'm reading next. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> but like there's quite a lot of already like gore or gory things happening and I'm reading it and I'm like oh no <laughs> so that's on me I'm gonna try and read like at least another 120 pages tonight and check in with you again okay I have been on a journey a journey with with this book so far let me tell you so it took me a long time to fully get into this book I'm on page 220 now so i have read that much i've got this much left to go i very rarely dog ear my pages but i had to in this moment because i couldn't be bothered to get up and get uh, a bookmark sure jan it took me a long time to get into this book because what i want to say is right i think as a white not only a white reviewer a white reader but as a white english reviewer where you know we don't we don't have that kind of indigenous uh, history that you know America and Canada have I think I have very little actual understanding of native culture beliefs um context and this book it took me a moment to get into because of that and I want to be very conscious of that and I also want to encourage any of you who pick this up who are white to really take a moment to check yourself on that and to recognize that because I didn't fully start appreciating the book until I did that because I think I was kind of in this headspace of like I don't know what the fuck is going on this book isn't necessarily vibing with me and then I checked myself and I was like there's a reason you don't understand this is because you have very little understanding of this culture and that's something you want to improve so that's why this book is so important so once I did that I started loving it so much more and also it came at a point when the narrative kind of shifts in a way I wasn't expecting and I really appreciated and so much like crazy shit is happening now I don't want to spoil any Thing, but we're getting like perspectives that I am just obsessed with that like are, if I whoo if you'd have told me wow I can't I can't how iconic some of the stuff in this is talented brilliant incredible amazing show-stopping spectacular never the same but like I said that kind of level of enjoyment has only maybe been like the past 60 pages or something it took me a very long time to get into it I think Stephen Graham Jones is doing something so wonderful in that he's really showcasing native beliefs we're following uh for blackfeet natives and the author himself is a, is from blackfeet nation the way that he builds in you know native beliefs and customs and humor to someone who like knows nothing about it is so expertly done but also i imagine in a way that if you are aware of those particularly if they're your own when you're reading it you'd immediately get the reference and you'd be like oh wow this is so great it took me a moment to get used to is this kind of told in this like rambling style especially at the beginning this kind of like ongoing thought rambling like anxious kind of narrative style and that did that threw me off I didn't love that aspect of it that wasn't a very enjoyable reading experience for me but I do understand why that why that choice was made and yeah 
I'm enjoying it, but I've only just kind of started enjoying it. <laughs> We've been on a ride. We've been on like a long ride, me and this book. Yeah, and just the way that, oh, they're being punished for this crime against nature and nature is rising up and getting revenge is just crazy. It's just so interesting. It's so good. And I feel like these last like 120 pages are going to be balls to the wall crazy. And I, I'm not ready. I'm not gonna be able to finish it tonight, but I'm gonna get close. So I'm, I'm in this outfit for the thumbnail. Don't judge me. <laughs> It's my spooky outfit. I finished The Only Good Indians. Here's the thing. The second half of this is incredible. It really ramps up with that pace, that pressure, that tension that I want. It's crazy. It's like so much is happening. And the ending, like the, the last couple pages literally gave me goosebumps. Like I almost cried. It gave me such an emotional reaction. I can't say why, because I don't want to spoil it for anyone. Because I, I really want people to go and read this if they haven't already. I mean, I'm late to the party, but like if you haven't, I would really recommend it. I felt like the ending symbolised so many things and was just so beautifully done for a horror. Like, it, it really wasn't I'm expecting. I was expecting something very, very different. But I loved it. But <laughs> my initial reaction at the end of that, like, as soon as I finished the last page, was to give it a four. But already, just like a couple hours later, I'm kind of leaning towards a 3.5 overall. When really, there's not much difference. I'm still gonna rate it a four on Goodreads. So like, <laughs> there's not much difference there. Yeah, I just feel like it wasn't quite a four for me because of like the roller coaster <laughs> of emotions I had with the book. And because I feel like the start, the first half didn't quite give me like the drama and tension and scariness the second half gave me. Plus there's some changes in the second half to do with like the narrative and what we know about the story that really what made it for me but I wish perhaps that had been a little bit earlier some of that. I loved also in the kind of latter parts of this the importance that basketball played. I thought that was super interesting. I really love sport in books and fiction and I wasn't aware of how important basketball is to like modern indigenous communities and I found that so interesting and the way <laughs> I want to spoil stuff. I want to like talk about this book spoilery, but the way that the narrative is furthered through some of the basketball scenes kind of symbolically, I thought was just so incredibly clever. So I really enjoyed it, especially the second half. The first half, a bit iffy, but 3.5 is still a good rating. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you've gotten to the end, comment a, um, a ghost emoji for the haunted houseness of this book. Comment a ghost emoji if you got into the end. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. And um, I'm starting to feel like myself again. So hopefully, I feel like this vlog wasn't that great. <laughs> So hopefully next week I'll be back to myself a bit. I'm starting to feel a little bit better. So um, yeah, I love you guys. I hope you're doing well and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.